In this session, we are going to discuss our new chapter, which is called Electromagnetic Waves. So, till here, we were discussing about uh, electricity, I mean uh, electrostatics, and uh, uh, we, were, we have discussed about the uh, concept of magnetism. But the uh, thing is, these two concepts are discussing separately. But people, I mean the scientists, were well, don't know the relation between this electricity and the magnetism. But when we are discussing the concept of uh, electromagnetic induction, the scientist Faraday told that uh, there is a relation between the concept of uh, electricity and the concept of magnetism. So there are a lot of uh, discussions were going on the concept of electricity and magnetism. At the meantime, there was uh, another scientist called uh, Maxwell who, who, was, uh, uh, who was trying to relate the concept of electricity and concept of magnetism. So because of uh, his, uh, uh, his uh, dedication in this field, this uh, lead to a uh, new topic which is called as uh, electromagnetic waves. And if you look at the words, if you look at the heading of uh, this chapter, we can split this as two. One is in your electro, the remaining here is here is a magnet. So from the heading itself, what we can understand is, it is a wave, we already know about a wave, we know about a water waves, uh, we already know about the sound waves in our first year, and we know, we have a, a, a picture about uh, what a wave is, and here we have two terms, electro and magnet. I mean, well, uh, as a whole, what we can understand is, this wave consists of uh, an electric part as well as a magnetic part. So here if you look at this word, they are combined together. So that is, in other words, what we can say is, the concept of electricity and concept of magnetism are combined here. Because of that uh, unification, one wave has been produced and that wave is been called as an electromagnetic wave. So this is actually done by Maxwell. So before Maxwell, a lot of scientists were worked on this field. They were all uh, giving some result from their experiments. So using all these experimental results, Maxwell uh, unified the two domains. Which are the two domains? The concept of electricity and concept of magnetism. Those are the very large domains in which we were studying about it. But this Maxwell took the results of uh, Faraday and uh, Lenz and uh, also of uh, Oersten and he uh, uh, combined or unified the concept of electricity and magnetism and uh, which uh, gave a new theory or a new field which is an electromagnetic. And uh, this uh, Maxwell was a thinking like this. From the Faraday's experiment, we know that whenever changing magnetic flux linked with the coil, will induce uh, uh, electric current in it or will induce a EMF in it. But this Maxwell was thinking the thinking whether the converse effect is possible, which means whether the changing electric field produces a magnetic field and this idea came to the mind of uh, Maxwell because uh, he was uh, doing an experiment he was uh, calculating the magnetic uh, field with the help of amperes of metal actually he was uh, doing that experiment on uh, he was uh, calculating the magnetic field of the one capacitor so while doing so, uh, he found an inconsistency in the upper circuit, which means he was not able to calculate the exact value of magnetic field with the help of upper circuit. Or in other words, he was not able to apply the upper circuit law to the that situation. So that is why he thought that 
there should be a correctness in the ambers of the law. And he also told that a magnetic field is producing in between the region of two plates. And uh, he worked on this. Well, this means uh, why, we call, why the magnetic field is producing in the uh, between the plates of capacitor. And uh, finally, he got the reason. So to uh, uh, so to remove the inconsistency in the Ampere circuit law, he has introduced the one term, and that term is called as displacement term. And because of that displacement current, and magnetic field was producing between the two plates of capacitor. So, because of this experiment, he was able to say that the changing electric field also produces a magnetic field. So, this was this gave him uh, give him a, uh, a base to the theory of electromagnetism. So this is the, about the Maxwell's, uh, Maxwell's theory which is about the electromagnetic theory. And uh, so to explain this uh, electromagnetic theory, Maxwell has uh, developed some equations. He has uh, created some equations which become uh, framed as Maxwell's equations and using those Maxwell's equations he was able to prove the existence of electromagnetic fields. Actually he has given two equations, one for electricity, another one for magnetism but he unified it and he gave one equation and uh, that was the equation and that equation was for electromagnetic fields. So using which he was able to uh, say the features and natures of this electromagnetic field. And I to support, as a support, there are different scientists who are also working in the meantime and uh, because of which this theory of Maxwell have been proved. We should question, question ourselves that how these electromagnetic waves are produced. What is it then? What is the concept of this electromagnetic uh, magnetism according to the Maxwell? So Maxwell uh, uh, give the, gave the reasons for all these questions from his uh, Maxwell's equation. Uh, he said that these electromagnetic waves are produced from oscillating charge. We already know about uh, electric field and magnetic field. Electric fields are if, the, if there is a charge which is stationary, that will produce an electric field. And if the charge is moving, that will produce a magnetic field. But that doesn't produce this electromagnetic field. Then what should be there? The charge has to oscillate, it should vibrate with some frequency. Then it will generate an electromagnetic wave. So let me give you a brief uh, uh, idea about this electromagnetic wave. So let's consider uh, one charge. One charge. It will vibrate upward and uh, in the up, up and down directions. So it will vibrate. So because of this vibration, it will induce a change in electric field. As a change in electric field has to produce a magnetic field. Because this is a this concept uh, is uh, seen by Maxwell while he was uh, calculating the magnetic field between the two plates of capacitor. Because we know between the plates of capacitor uh, no contact, there is no contact between the two plates of capacitor. Still a magnetic field exists between them. So that, uh, that is because of 
or displacement current as said by Maxwell. So in a similar way, whenever this charge is vibrating, it will, do, it will create a changing electric field. That changing electric field will induce a magnetic field. We know it from the uh, concept of Maxwell. And whenever this, uh, since, since the electric field is changing, that will induce a changing magnetic field. So if there is a changing magnetic field, that will induce a current. We know uh, already from the uh, Faraday's theory. So this changing magnetic field again will induce a electric field. Again, that electric field has to induce a magnetic field. So this process will continue. That's why this alternating electric and magnetic field will travel in the space. They are sustained or electric and magnetic fields. They always are, are travel in the space. So this is a, a, a brief picture of the this electromagnetic field. So that is why from uh, this idea what we can understand is these electric and magnetic fields are, uh, are propagated in a space, in a free space. Although this Maxwell said like this, the scientists were not ready to accept the uh, concept that is uh, given by this Maxwell. That uh, Maxwell's theory needed some uh, uh, some supports. Some other theories uh, should, uh, needed uh, to uh, say that the electromagnetic waves are existed. At the meantime, there was a scientist called uh, Henry Hertz who was also working on it and uh, he said that uh, he has uh, proved with some experiment uh, about the existence of this electromagnetic waves. And at the same time, another scientist, uh, his name is uh, Jagdish Chandra Bose and uh, he was able to produce a shorter wavelength. Uh, he has produced a wave which has a very shorter wavelength. And at the same time, one more scientist, uh, G. Marconi, he is very famous because uh, he has a, uh, he is a father of uh, radio. So that uh, Marconi has uh, developed uh, or designed a device that is called radio, and which was communicated through the radio waves. So because of these three scientists. It is proved that the electromagnetic waves are existing. So all these theories supported the theory of Maxwell. So this is a, uh, some uh, some uh, information about the, this Maxwell theory as well as uh, we learnt about the source of uh, uh, source of electromagnetic. Then we should see what is the nature of these electromagnetic waves. How these electromagnetic waves behave. So these are all the things we need to study. Yes. So to explain these electromagnetic waves, I told you Maxwell has developed two equations. So using two equations, he tried to prove the existence of electromagnetic waves and also he is able to calculate the speed of that wave and which was around 2.99 into the power 8 meter per second. Even today we are accepting the speed of light as a 3 into the power 8 meter per second, which is actually uh, which is uh, uh, almost equal to the 2.99 into the power. Minus uh, that is about eight meters. So this value is is uh, given by Maxwell using this theory. So he, uh, in explaining this theory, he uh, gave the nature of these electromagnetic waves. So from his theory, what uh, he understood is these electric and magnetic fields are propagating in a space and they are perpendicular to each other. So this, this is uh, he understood from the, uh, from the experiment of that capacitor. 
while calculating the magnetic field in the capacitor, he observed that these electric fields and the magnetic fields are perpendicular to each other. That's why these electromagnetic waves, which consist of uh, oscillating electric and magnetic fields or alternating electric and magnetic fields, are propagating in a space and which are perpendicular to each other. This is one property of this electromagnetic waves. And these electromagnetic waves has a sustainable uh, sustained electric and magnetic fields which are propagating in a space. They are continuously having electric and uh, magnetic paths. And we already know it, they are perpendicular to each other. So if you wanted to picturize these electromagnetic waves, I can draw a simple figure over here. Let's say this x-axis, this is y-axis. Let this be z-axis. So we already know it, electromagnetic waves which consist of uh, electric and magnetic fields. This is the vibration of electric field, or we can say propagation of electric field. See, this is the Propagation of magnetic field. See, this is this electric field is along the x-axis. That's along x-axis, or you can say in the x-z plane. This electric field is along the x-z plane, but this magnetic field is along y-z plane. This is along this plane. So the angle formed between these two are because x and y are perpendicular and x and z are also perpendicular to each other. That's why these waves, electromagnetic waves, which propagate in a space with an angle 90 degree to each other. See, this is Directions of electric field and directions of magnetic field. So this indicates as the direction of magnetic field. This again indicates as the direction of electric field. So they are perpendicular and they are sustained. They are sustained electric and magnetic fields. They are continuous. One. They again the waves have electric part and magnetic part. So this is the to nature of these electromagnetic waves. And speed of these electromagnetic waves is found to be 3 into 10 to the power 8 meter per second. This was the speed of that electromagnetic waves. This was a, again a one more feature of this electromagnetic wave. And one important, one more important feature was we already know about uh, sound waves and uh, water waves. We know different kinds of waves, mechanical waves, we already know about it. All these waves require a medium for the travel. If you take a sound wave, this needs an air medium for the propagation. If there is no air in this medium, this sound will not be traveled from one place to the from, from one point to another. This needs a medium. So similarly, scientists were thinking that which medium is a present for the propagation of this electromagnetic wave. In the initial time, they believed that there is a hypothetical medium called ether and which was surrounded all the universe and because of it, these electromagnetic waves are propagating in this space. But the scientists, uh, uh, two more scientists called Michelson and Morley, who, was a, uh, who, uh, who has uh, done some experiment, because of their experiment, the concept of ether was demolished. It uh, told that 
for the propagation of electromagnetic waves, no medium is required. So that is why it is a very important feature that the electromagnetic waves do not require any medium for the propagation. It can travel in any region without the presence of any transfer medium. So that is why this is a very uh, a remarkable uh, feature of this electromagnetic waves. Then, whether this uh, electromagnetic waves carries energy? Because uh, we know that from the Maxwell theory, if the charge is oscillating, that will produce an electromagnetic wave. Then, what will be the frequency of that electromagnetic wave? Because if we say a wave, that wave should have some frequency and a wavelength. Then what will be the frequency of that electromagnetic wave? That definitely should be equal to the, the frequency of uh, vibration of that charge. Then what about this energy of this electromagnetic wave? Or in other words, what we can question ourselves that whether this electromagnetic waves carries energy and momentum. Definitely, these electromagnetic waves carries momentum and energy. And whatever the energy of these electromagnetic waves is supplied by the oscillating charge. Because these are produced by produced by the oscillating charge. So the the energy must be equal to the energy of uh, that oscillating charge. Then, how to say these electromagnetic waves uh, carries energy? So this can be seen by doing an experiment. Uh, actually, by placing a plane in between the these uh, electromagnetic waves in the path of the electromagnetic waves. So, in the plane we have considered, the charges are in the sustained motion. They are in a continuous motion. They are in motion because of the electromagnetic waves which is penetrating through that area. So, while penetrating through that area, these electromagnetic waves are, are energizing that charge particle and also they are giving some momentum, they are transferring the momentum to that charge particle which is which is present in that area. So that is why what we can understand is these electromagnetic waves are carries an energy as well as a moment. Then one question may come to our mind that light is an electromagnetic wave, whichever the light which is coming from our sun is also electromagnetic. So it will fall on our body and uh, we know that our body also consists of one electrons. And if the if the if that radiation falls on us, then the uh, momentum should transfer to the electron which is present in our body, right? If the electron in our body got some momentum and energy, that should oscillate. So by the continuous oscillation, we should feel very hot in our body. But it doesn't affect us. Then what is the reason behind this? So the reason behind this is like this. So the pressure created because of this electromagnetic waves, whenever it falls on any surface, is called a radiation pressure. And that equation for that radiation pressure is a P is equal to is equal to U by C. So this is the equation for radiation pressure of an electromagnetic wave. So this is the pressure created by the electromagnetic wave when it is a, a, a falls on any material. So here U means it is an energy transferred by that electromagnetic wave on that surface on any given surface which is a uh, fell on it, on which uh, surface it uh, fell in. and C is the, it is the speed of light and that radial ratio gives a value of the radiation pressure 
And if you look at this, the value of C is very much greater than this U. That's why if the value denominator is much greater than the uh, numerator, then the value we are getting will be very small. So because of this reason, whatever the radiation pressure on our body will not affect us. Will not, this will not be too much. So this is the uh, reason uh, uh, behind uh, uh, our body not heating up when the uh, electromagnetic waves fall on us. So this is about some nature of this electromagnetic waves. And these are uh, important results. And after this we have to discuss about the uh, electromagnetic waves I mean, in particular, we will discuss about an electromagnetic spectrum. So, spectrum means it is a batch. In a, we can call it as a, a collection. So, electromagnetic waves is a collection of waves. There are different kinds of uh, waves we can be, uh, we can see. Together, it is called as an electromagnetic waves. So, these electromagnetic waves consist of uh, gamma rays, x-rays and uh, uh, uv rays, visible rays, then uh, ultraviolet, uh, sorry, uh, infrared rays, they consist of uh, radio waves, microwaves, we are all familiar with it. So, all these waves are called as an electromagnetic. So they will come in a one batch. They will uh, they will one uh, come in a one uh, spectrum. That is why it is called as an electromagnetic spectrum. So all these waves have a different uh, wavelengths and frequencies because all these are waves, and this wave nature is explained by Hertz. He has done the, the experiment and he. Confirm the wave nature of this uh, waves. Uh, sorry, of uh, uh, this concept of electromagnetic. So the, uh, this, uh, I told you, electromagnetic spectrum consists of uh, different waves. That is why all these waves should have their own frequency and their own wavelengths. So let us uh, see the spectrum of uh, electromagnetic waves. EM spectrum, electromagnetic wave spectrum or electromagnetic spectrum. So this spectrum consists of uh, different kinds of uh, waves, like uh, negative as a first one is a uh, gamma waves, gamma rays, you can uh, gamma rays. Then is X rays, second is X rays, third one is UV rays. UV means this is called ultraviolet rays. Then visible light, visible light. Then infrared rays, IR rays, infrared rays. Then we can come up with the microwaves. Microwaves, then radio waves. Radio waves, after that, there is a television waves also there. Radio waves, before the microwaves, sorry, before the radio waves, we can see television waves. So, all these waves together are the same. So this is a band of waves, this is a collection of waves and I told you these are all waves that's why they should have frequencies and wavelengths. Let's try the frequency, let's try the wavelength. There are different datas for the frequencies and wavelength. 
but uh, I'm not going to write all those here. You can refer all these values uh, uh, from your text. Okay, I will give a general idea about the frequency and the wavelength for all these objects. What I am going to say is, what is the variation of this frequency and the wavelength for all these waves? So that we should know. So if you look at the frequency, yes, gamma ray will have very high frequency. High frequency, high gamma ray will have very high frequency and radio waves, these radio waves will have very low frequency. So that's why the frequency of the waves increases as you move from radio waves to gamma rays. When you are moving in this order, when you, uh, when you compare the radio waves or IR waves, IR waves have more frequency than the radio waves. If you compare IR waves and X-rays, X-ray have more frequency than the IR waves. So that is why gamma ray have a very high frequency, radio waves have a very less frequency. So as you move from radio waves to gamma ray, frequency increases. See, this is the increasing. And when you come to the wavelength, shorter one, short one, very short, shorter wavelength will be there for the gamma rays. And when you go to the radio waves, they have very longer wavelength. So that is why the wavelength of the waves will vary like this. As we move from gamma ray to radio waves, the wavelength will increase. So that gamma rays have a shorter ray and radio waves have a longer ray. So that, that's why as we move from gamma to radio wave, the wavelength will increase. So uh, as we move from radio waves to gamma rays, the frequency will increase. So this is the relation between frequency and the wavelength, uh, also I can say the variation of frequency and wavelength. So that's why gamma ray has very high frequency but shorter wavelength. What, the, what is the difference between shorter wavelength and longer wavelength? I can uh, give a picture like this. See, this is one is a very longer wavelength. Shorter ones, very shorter wavelength. So this is the idea about shorter and longer wavelength. So this is the variation of frequency and the wavelength for the electromagnetic spectrum. So after this we are going to discuss uh, about the gamma, x-ray, UV and all these spectrums uh, separately. But I am not going to discuss all about this in this session because uh, we, are, we will see the applications of the, all these waves. And uh, it is very simple, you can uh, read it. Yes, that is why I am not going to discuss all these things. But uh, these are very, very important for your exams. So, next part you have to see, you have to read yourself, yourself about the applications of all these things. These are very, very, very simple.